Cześć, witajcie. Moi drodzy, ze względu na fakt taki, że ostatni film, jaki zamieściłem, w zasadzie krótki urywek, 6-minutowy, cieszył się z Waszej strony bardzo dużym zainteresowaniem. Widzę, że bardzo jesteście zainteresowani właśnie tematem powrotu w gołębi. Ta trasa, jaką gołąb przebywa z punktu wypuszczenia do punktu powrotu. Widzę, że film bardzo Wam się podobał, daliście ogrom łapek w górę, bardzo dużo komentarzy pojawiło się pod filmem, jak również sam film, choć krótki, to miał bardzo dużo wyświetleń jak na mój kanał. W związku z tym wydaje mi się, że kanał, przepraszam, w związku z tym wydaje mi się, że film, który dla Was przygotowałem również zaciekawi Was, a mianowicie chciałbym zrobić dla Was taką kompilację tych filmów właśnie przez innych hodowców, którzy za pośrednictwem tych obrączek nawigujących z GPS-em po prostu pokazują w jaki sposób te gołąbki powracają. Mam nadzieję, że wnioski jakie z tego filmu być może wywnioskujecie sami, czy ja Wam tutaj postaram się troszeczkę też w jakiś sposób od siebie zrelacjonować to, co również tutaj będę w dalszej części filmu Wam pokazywał. Mam nadzieję, że na przykład na pewne pytania wspólnie jakoś znajdziemy sobie odpowiedzi, między innymi na to, jak wysoko jest w stanie gąb lecieć, żeby powrócić do domu. Chodzi mi tutaj o wysokość, chodzi mi tutaj o prędkość gołębi. No i sam, sam ten etap powrotu gołębi, gołębie lecące nad dużymi przestrzeniami lasów, gołębie lecące nad górami, gołębie lecące gdzieś nad dużymi zbiornikami wodnymi. Tutaj w tym filmie będę chciał Wam pokazać kilka takich ciekawych przykładów, żebyście mogli sobie w taki wywnioskować dla samych siebie, czy, czy jak po prostu jak bardzo te gołębie mają ciąg do domu i ile są w stanie poświęcić, żeby osiągnąć swój cel. Także nie przedłużając, zapraszam do dalszej części filmu. the battery and so it comes with these little tabs that you need to pull out that way it's not wasting battery the whole time that it's sitting on a shelf waiting to be sold or en route being shipped so anyways it's a little it's a bit of a tight fit but uh it looks like this is the charger nice so we'll just take one of these guys pull out that little black strip set it down there yep look at that that's where the pins line up what do we got over here in this box <laughs> oh yes these are important so these are not actual gps rings rather these are kind of dummy rings or plastic rings just to kind of put on your bird so they get used to wearing that little extra weight on one leg. You know, if we were just to throw this on right before we wanted to toss them and get the information, um, that might be a little bit of a surprise and an unpleasant surprise for the birds. But this way, you can let them wear this for a few days, and then right before you toss them, you swap it with one of the real bands. That way they're ready to go. Okay. So yeah, these just open up. And I was wondering when I was looking at this, how do these things actually clip on? So they got this going right here. But I guess I was mostly wondering how do they um, clip on with respect to the band? Do they go over the band, around the band? You know, on the different leg? That's a little bit hard to open up actually, not gonna lie. 
that's good, I guess. We don't want it popping open mid-flight. But look, it has this little cavity right there for the band. So, got an old string of bands here. If this was uh, my bird, that would just sit in nice and tight right there. See, it's got that little, little spot for it to fit. Perfect. And just clamps right in place. There it is. Nice. And, you know, I think we've demonstrated that this band is not going to just fall off your, your bird while you're flying because it's got a pretty good clip mechanism. Nice job on Skyleader's part. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to use this. I'm going to charge these guys. Um, I've got five of these that I'm going to um, put on my birds. I already know some of the birds that I'm going to entrust with these <laughs> bands. Um, so, yeah, we'll get to that. Awesome. I really want to thank Sky Leader. It's a really beautiful product, and it's just a no-brainer. Um, you know, if you want to see where your birds are actually going and to make informed, basically these little batteries can just slide, they clip off. So there it is. Got those two little plates right down there, which come in contact with those two gold plates right there. Pretty nice. Then it just slides back in place. It's gonna clip here. There it goes. So it's got my thumb. Both my thumbs. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> now I'm just going to grab the cord. There it is. Come on, James. We got viewers who have places to be. All right. Okay, so this is actually how you charge them. You go in this nice little tray, the little battery slips out, and just, let's see. It's charging time, you just slide it in there, bing bong, plug it in, and it's good to go. Flip that around, plug that in, and there you go. That's flashing because there isn't anything in it. All right, my one and two slot batteries are ready to go. So I'm gonna pull those out, put them in there. And once I put them in there, I believe the timer starts. I believe they start logging data. So I'll take them out to the loft, get them on birds and let the birds out. Scott back on the second Maui race. Again, they were released on the island of Maui, flying to the island of Oahu, and the first recorded position is right where they're released in Makawao. I cannot believe this. I, I thought for sure the birds were going to go along the north shore of Maui or the south shore of Maui, but these birds just went straight over this very tall mountain right here. Wow, look how high they are. So this is 1,156 meters, again, because this mountain is very tall, and I can't believe these birds, they just flew straight over it which is good, it's a straight line to um, the west towards Oahu, approaching the west shoreline of Maui. Wow, they're still pretty high, 601 meters, still going very fast, 596 meters, and they didn't waste any time over here on the west uh, shoreline of Maui. They just continued towards Oahu, which is awesome. And look how high they are over the water. In recent training I've done from Molokai, when they fly over the water, sometimes they're at the water surface, they're not normally this high. So again, the winds are so light today that I think the birds were flying a lot higher. For whatever reason, instead of continuing west towards the island of Oahu on the track they were taking, they, this bird turned north. And I wonder how many birds were with it when it made this turn north because if it went straight or if some of the birds went straight from here, those birds would have had a faster time, I think. But anyway, so they climbed up this other mountain on the island of Molokai. So you can see they're starting to climb 714 meters right here. Yeah, they're starting a descent, 966 meters. They're picking up speed a little bit. And for whatever reason, I thought the birds would have wanted to stay over land as long as possible. But these birds went off the North Shore of 
Molokai, which is very interesting. So they chose to fly over the water instead of land. So 813 meters, they're still very high over the water surface. Speed is increasing, 1,337 meters per minute, still very high, maintaining their altitude. Again, the wind uh, comes down from the northeast and is normally about, can be up to 30 knots when they cross this channel between Molokai and Oahu. But today it was about five knots. So you can see these birds were flying much higher, which may be attributed to that. And also they flew a pretty straight line from the island of Molokai to the island of Oahu. Normally in the last uh, two training tosses from Molokai, when I did get data of the them crossing this channel the winds were much stronger so you could see that they definitely flew a northern arc coming down back to Oahu so today they flew a pretty straight track you know it's very interesting how high they were this whole time and it's very consistent again this probably was a fairly large flock of birds because there was probably close to 900 birds released today and this is also very interesting now I haven't had any data uh, GPS data while my bird was flying in a large flock with other uh, birds that are located in different locations on Oahu. So right here is where the birds are going to have to make the decision to break from each other. So some of the birds are going to fly towards the north side of Oahu. There is this very tall mountain ridge line right here. Uh, so the birds were either going to fly north of that or south of that. So my bird did a great job of breaking south towards the direction of its loft. So some of the birds I'm sure were going north at this time and my bird and along with other birds that are located on the south side of Oahu are going south. And then it looks like they started their descent 328 meters. And then this is going to be another breaking point. So there's a lot of lofts located maybe a little farther north than where my loft is located. So it looks like my bird made the decision to do what it normally does and break towards the south shoreline of Oahu to follow the south shore. And it looks like the speed slowed. So maybe now that it's uh, on its own or it's a much smaller flock, it started flying slower, which is not a good thing. And let's see what it got. Wow, it descended a lot. So 38 meters as it started to get closer to the law. It's really interesting to see what route it took, not only from the island of Maui, which was surprising at what route it took, but also what route it took when it was on a much larger um, flock of birds coming back to Oahu. You know, and I'm not sure why the birds made this turn north. Maybe the birds like to fly over tall landmarks. So that's what they did right here. They flew over this tall landmark on Maui, this very tall mountain right here, and then they went for this tall mountain here on Molokai. And I, th I think this bird did fairly well. You know, I'm just really glad to see that it doesn't look like it landed anywhere. And you know, there's one easy way to check that, and I'll show you that now. So this is another great tool that the Sky Leader software offers you. So on the screen, this is just a graphic of what speed the bird was at and what altitude it was at over the duration of the recorded positions today. So the blue is the speed and the brown line is the altitude. The highest recorded position was when they first flew over that tall mountain on Maui. So you can see the altitude on the right hand side of the screen is 1,156 meters and the speed at that position was 950 uh, meters per minute. And you can see it started its descent by looking at this brown line and this is where it's crossing the channel from Maui to Molokai and where it made its turn north to fly up to the tallest point on Molokai right here where the altitude is 1,052 meters and it looks like the speed stayed fairly consistent and it's the fact that you don't see the blue line going down to the bottom of the graph indicating that the bird speed is zero which lets you know that this bird did not land at any point on its um, flight back to the loft. You can see the brown line starts to descend and this is as it's flying along the north side uh, just offshore of Molokai and it's crossing the channel. Now you see uh, one anomaly right here, and that's exactly what it is. This is not an accurate uh, recorded position. The speed is over 6,000 meters per minute. So that's obviously not correct. If you look past that, you can see that the speed is pretty consistent and it's starting to descend.